I'm Elizabeth Oliphant from Music City, and I'm so excited to be here. Well, we are <laughs> delighted to have you, Miss Music Good. City. <laughs> I'm going to begin uh, talking about symphony orchestras. Okay. I'm going to ask you about sure. symphony orchestras in today's world are very okay. challenged. What, yes. what are some of the issues that the Nashville Symphony do you think is facing or will be facing as well as the crescendo club that you mentioned? Well, unfortunately, the Nashville Symphony has just claimed bankruptcy. We are 30, or $82 million in debt. And if I could buy it and have that much money, I would. But um, the big thing that the crescendo club is doing, it's um, a group that me and 12 other people started was to get the younger generations of Nashville involved because it's really important to get young professionals involved in part of the older culture of Nashville. When you look out at the symphony, you see people with gray hair. No offense. <laughs> you don't see a lot of younger people out there. Just checking to make sure. <laughs> but what the Christian Dote Club tries to do is just get a lot more younger people involved. And hopefully we can do this and hopefully someone will come by the symphony and keep it going because it's, it's absolutely wonderful and it's a big part of Nashville's culture. So you're a, you're a blogger. I am, yes. Now, what do you blog about? Well, my blog is called My Dash of Sass, and I blog about fashion, makeup, uh, pretty much day-to-day, -day. now what's going on at Miss Tennessee. And I started it so that my mom and her friends could keep up with all the social events that I went to in Nashville once I became more involved out of college. Can you share with us a little bit about your open heart surgery sure. and how this has impacted your life? Yeah, um, when I was six months old, I went in for open heart surgery. It's called Total Repair of Tetralogy of Flow. And I actually found out a year ago that it was a valve sparing surgery, so I don't have to go back when I'm 30 and get another one done, which we're all very grateful for. But I had a hole in my heart about the size of your pinky nail, some blood clots, and a valve wasn't placed on my aorta correctly. And so the blood wouldn't flow. And I would have tet spells, and they fixed me up perfectly and I actually have a scar that runs underneath my chest instead of a long one. So in swimsuit you might see a few little tube scars but it's nothing that has really just impacted my life in order not to be able to be comfortable in a swimsuit or confident in my body. But I'm just very grateful for the doctors that were able to save How my life. How did you know you had the problem? Were you born with it? or? Yes, I was born with it. I was very young. Honestly, I don't even remember. <laughs> so, But um, it was very trying on my family because it took my mom a long time to get pregnant and I'm kind of her miracle baby. And so for me to have to get cut open and worked on, it was really hard for my family, but um, here I am. How many times a day so far have you sneezed? I have sneezed <laughs> six times already. <laughs> I sneeze nine times a day, and the true all offense in my family do, do it. Um, my grandmother did it. My dad does it. And now I do it. I'm just going to go with genetics. I'm, I've never heard of this before, but yes, what? I've sneezed six times already. <laughs> Have you competed in Miss Tennessee before, and if so, how yes. did you do? I, I competed four years ago. I was Miss Athens of the South, which is a title that unfortunately no longer exists. Um, I was a train wreck, to say the least. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I was young. I was 19. And um, I'm just really excited to be back. What have you done differently to prepare this time around? I would just say I've really grown into myself, and I've learned maturity, and I think that's a really big part of the job of Miss Tennessee. I've been in the corporate world for three years, and so I understand what it takes to have a job and to really fulfill it to your highest potential. Elizabeth, how did you choose the song, I'm Going Down? Well, I was watching Smash, and I saw Megan Hilty sing it. Oh, man, just brought me to tears. And at that point, I had just gone through a breakup, and I thought, I can really put some emotion into this song. <laughs> so you said overexposure of sex in the media is a, is a big issue right now. Expound on that exactly what you mean. Sure. And then I'd like to know if you believe in abstinence or safe sex. Sure. I, um, I really think that our younger generations these days are just being shoved, like sex is just being shoved into their face. Um, it's sad because when you turn on the television, you see adultery happening or you see a nude body or partially nude body and it's just part of our culture now. And I, it's just really sad that that's something that isn't valued, just the value of your body and how sacred that is, isn't valued. Um, I do believe in abstinence. I think it's very important that our younger generations should learn just to respect your body and to really save that for marriage because it's something so, so special to share with that partner. Elizabeth, How do you feel about the plan oh. B being available to women of all ages? I'm not okay with that. I think that a 15-year-old that doesn't understand 
what the pill is, would go in there and use it as regular birth control. And that could really harm her body. I think that it should have an age limit on it. And I think that whenever someone goes in to get that pill, that they should really consult a professional about it. Elizabeth, what besides sex mm -hmm. does sell? That's a great question, because unfortunately I don't think we figured that out yet. But <laughs> I, mean, I would say confidence. Confidence sells. If you're confident in yourself and who you are, I mean, you can just you can sell it to a crowd. So we need a reality show about confidence. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> what, is one, what is one thing most people don't know about you? I, I have a really soulful singing voice, which is why I chose the song that I'm singing. I have a really tiny body frame. I kind of have a high-pitched voice, so when I open my mouth, we're going to go to church. That's all I have to say. <laughs> How are you selected as one of Nashville's top 30 under 30? What's the criteria sure. involved? It's based on your community service and just your involvement throughout Nashville. And it's brought um, to the attention by the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. And one criteria, one, or one um, thing that you have to do for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation if you are selected is raise $1,000 for cystic fibrosis. And so it's really interesting seeing these 30 young professionals go out into the community again and raise more money and seeing the events that they put on. This $15,000 that you've raised mm -hmm. for the Children's Miracle Network, was this only was this this year that you've raised this $15,000 no, 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 no. over That's, a period of time? I was involved in FIMU, or I still am a FIMU, I'm just an alum, and our philanthropy is Children's Miracle Network. And I was on a committee that started our annual fashion show event and I got to go back and see it after four years this year and oh my gosh it has grown so much and it's just been really really special to be able to be involved with Children's Miracle Network this long on two different levels. If you are choose, chosen as mm -hmm. Miss Tennessee are you able to step away from your professional career to devote a year to this program? Yes I actually interviewed my replacement last week just in case. <laughs> Well, Miss Music City, there's been news recently mm -hmm. about Tennessee female attorneys mm -hmm. wearing, uh, being urged to wear less revealing outfits. Mm -hmm. What do you think of, should a judge be able to do that, say that? I think so. I mean, Have it, you heard about this in the news? No, I haven't, but I'm, I can expand on it. I really think that a woman in a professional position should keep herself covered. I mean, it's the same as the dentist that let her his assistant go because he just couldn't keep his eyes right. off of her and he was tempted. And I think that it's very important that women just dress respectfully for the position that they hold. Do you Thanks. believe that the recent national security leaks could have been politically motivated? Well, I have my opinions on that, and I say yes. I think it could have been politically motivated, but in the long run, I. I really do think the Patriot Act was put here for a reason. It was to protect our country. And I think that with um, all of the phone followings and um, the rising conduct, I just really think that they are trying to protect us. But I think that maybe they could have done it kind of a less sneaking behind your back way. Why do you want to be Miss Tennessee? I want to be Miss Tennessee because I absolutely love this Miss America organization. I think what it does for young women is incredible. I mean, it just presents a well-rounded woman. And for people my age to get involved in community service is really hard, especially if you weren't involved in Greek life, uh, which has a big community service base, or if you aren't out in your community helping with community service. And I, I just really think that it just helps create a well-rounded woman, and that's something that we really need in this world. Um, Elizabeth, if you're so passionate about this organization, mm -hmm. what took you so long to, to come back and, and try one more time? Well, I wasn't mature enough for the job, and I am now, and I realized that after I left last or four years ago. And um, I just really wanted to focus on school, and I wanted to do the best that I could. I actually graduated in four years, luckily, but with a learning disability, and that was something that kind of prohibited me um, from coming back. And I just wanted to focus on school and make sure that I got the best education possible, and then find a career, and then come back. What is your learning disability? I have ADHD. I personally don't think so, but according to the six doctors that tested me, I do. But um, yeah, it was. It's very hard because it it's difficult to concentrate on a, on your studies and studying current events and really quickly. And uh, I was on Concerta for about five years, and on my senior year of college, I actually weaned myself off of it, so I'm no longer dependent on that drug, and I'm so very excited. How do you manage it now? Um, it's just something that I learned. I think with my maturity and just really focusing on school and now being in the corporate world, it, it just really helped me focus on what I'm doing. Do you think children are? No. 
Do you have anything else you'd like to share with us? Yes, there are just a few things that really set me apart from the rest of the girls in this competition. One, I can hunt and I can fish and I can skin a deer and fillet a bass on that table right in front of you. And I think that <laughs> makes me really relatable to the children of Tennessee. On top of that, I have a heart of a child, but the maturity to handle it. Through Big Brothers Big Sisters, I hang out with an eight-year-old girl on a weekly basis, so I know how to talk to these kids. And lastly, I am prepared for this job. I've been in the corporate world. I talk to investors and executives on a day-to-day -day basis, and I am ready to be Miss Tennessee. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good day. <laughs>